happen. So when we're given two points, if you remember from our first lesson, we can find our slope. So that's what we want to do first, because to find the equation of the line, you need to have the slope. So our slope formula, which I'll just call it m now, because we know that m is equal to the slope. We want to do rise over run. So remember that rise is the y value subtracted. And then run is the x value subtracted. So here's our formula for slope. All right, so let's plug it in. Oh, wait, we need to label our uh, two points. So since this is the first one, I'll just call it x1, y1. Since this is the second one, x2, y2. And now we can plug it in. OK, so y2, we have them being negative 6. Minus y1 is negative 5, all divided by our x2 is negative 2, minus our x1 is negative 4. So many negatives. All right, then we need to simplify it. I'm going to simplify it, I guess, underneath. Remember, when you're subtracting a negative, I think somebody mentioned it two days ago, because that's when I saw you last. When you subtract a negative, it's actually adding. So we actually have negative six plus five. So negative six plus five is negative one. And then we have a negative two minus a negative four, which means negative two plus four, which gives us two. So our little slope is two. I'll just put a box around it for now so it stands out a little bit because we're not done yet. We need to find an equation, not just the slope. <laughs> Any questions on the slope so far? OK. <laughs> so let me remind you that we want to put it in y equals mx plus b format. So so far, we found our m. So that's, a little, that's good. I'm going to put a little check mark on top of that. But we need to find our d still. So in order to do that, we have to plug in one of our points. It doesn't matter which one. You can plug in the first point. You can plug in the second point. It doesn't matter. It will give you the same answer. But for our example, I'll just plug in the first one because why not? So we have y equals m we found to be negative 1 half x plus b. And I said let's plug in our first point. So I'm plugging in this one. OK. Trying to point without really pointing with a finger. So we have our y value is negative 5 equals negative 1 half. And our x value is negative 4 plus b. And then I'm going to pause here and see if you guys have any questions so far. I don't know if I'm talking too fast or writing too fast. OK. <laughs> So from here, it's very similar to a problem type that we did earlier. We just have to solve for b, and then we pretty much have it. So we have negative 5 is equal to, you guys can help me with this one. What's negative 1 half times negative 4? Two. Two. Yeah, two. 2 plus b, and then how do we get rid of the 2 now? Subtract. Yep, thank you. Subtract on both sides. So we got negative 7 is equal to b. That sounds familiar. Didn't I have negative 7 on the other example too? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to put this in a box so it stands out because there's just so much writing going on here. Um, I want to make sure things stand out, our answers are standing out. All right, so now we got our b value and we got our m value. And we just have to write out our final answer. So our final answer is, I'll write it in the answer box, y is equal to, we said our m was negative 1 half, x plus b, so minus 7. So let me just 
highlight again our M. Comes up here. And then our B, which we found to be negative seven, that ends up over here. Any questions on this one? Okay. Negative one half x minus seven, so y equals negative one half x. Oops. Okay, see, I don't want to type it in the bottom, so I'm going to delete that. Remember, I said use the right arrow. There we go. X minus 7. Oops, I didn't even type it. X minus 7. There we go. And it says we got it right, so that's great. I'm going to end the recording for this one.